What happens to your heart when you stop eating carbs? That was a question that uh, was posed in a recent headline. Now, when I read the article, it was not surprising. It was the same old propaganda. Saturated fat is bad for you. If you do a low carb diet, you're putting yourself at risk at heart disease. Your cholesterol is going to go up. It was an awful article. And these, these articles are so predictable now. Whenever the carnivore or keto way of eating gains popularity, all the official organs come out with articles against any sort of low-carb diet, trying to stoke people's fears. And this article was no different. But what caught my eye about it was the title. What happens to your heart when you stop eating carbs? And I looked at it in a different way. Not the heart as in our physical health, but what happens to our heart as in our spirit, our sense of purpose, our feeling of peace. In Judaism, heart is lev. Lev is where our soul rests. Lev, our heart is where our mind rests. So I asked myself, in my own experience, what happens to the heart when we stop eating carbs? And it's all good. The heart grows. It opens up. So I created a list. I said, let's, let's look at this question closely. What does it do to our heart? First, giving up carbs, embracing carnivore, lets our heart rest. We have a greater feeling of being at peace. It's truly a wonderful effect. You know, you think about when we hear the word carnivore, we tend to think about an apex predator, angry, aggressive, overpowering. But the truth is, the carnivore way of eating makes us more peaceful, calm, focused. Talk to any carnivore about that and you'll see. It's almost universal. You know, my friend, the old man carnivore, Mitch, he likes to end his videos, which I love. Take the rest of the day off and eat meat. Take the rest of the day off and eat meat. Now, when he says that, I don't take it as take the rest of the day off from work. I take it as let your heart be at peace for the rest of the day and eat meat because carnivore way of eating gives us that peace. We don't get ruffled. And I think that's because of the inflammation. I mean, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. This is not medical advice. I don't know why it works. But when we give up carbs, when we simplify what we eat to the proper human diet to meet, we don't get as anxious. We don't get as uptight. We don't get as worried. Our heart is more peaceful. So that's the first thing it does to our heart. Giving up carbs lets our heart rest, gives us peace. Second thing it does is we become less obsessive. We don't ruminate and dwell on things. Again, I'm speaking from personal experience, but also from the many, many experiences of carnivores around the world. Look at this one. Probably the biggest thing I wanted to say about this is, is the, the peace of mind, not peace of mind, more of a, I say, obsessive compulsiveness goes along with carbohydrates. And my, my style of living is obsessive compulsive. And that when you, when, on, when you're on a carnivore diet, when you're in ketosis, OCD goes away. For me. Why did this happen to him? because his heart, his mind was less inflamed. He was nourishing himself properly. When we nourish ourselves properly, we feel better. You do. You just, have you ever, have you ever had a, a very satiating meal and you just felt relaxed afterwards? Well, that happening every day, every meal. That's what carnivore can do. Third thing carnivore does to our heart is it opens it up. It turns us into nicer people. I'm not exaggerating when I'm telling you that 
almost every interaction I've had with carnivores online, in person, has been positive, uplifting, generous. There's a certain generosity. Now, part of it is we want, we really believe in this message. We want it to succeed. We want to spread the word about the carnivore way of eating because we really believe it can heal humanity, as Carrie Mann says. That's part of it. But I also think the diet is part of it. What we're eating is not agitating us. It's not getting us moody and angry and uptight. It's not, it's not pushing that, that agitation. You know, I think about it sometimes, carbs. I mean, anybody who has kids knows that when you give your kids too much sugar, they run around, they can't stop. They're agitated, they're, they're high energy, too much energy. So you don't give kids sugar at night. Well, in America today, we give kids sugar all day. I mean, look at the look at the lunch menus at public schools. Look at the soda machines at public schools. And that's no accident. Callie Means has talked about how the soda companies like Coca-Cola give school district hundreds of millions of dollars to get the rights to install those machines in schools to addict kids to sugar early. And look what it does. Not only is it unhealthy, but it creates anxiety and tension all over the place. That's the, that's the truth. And carnivore, really just eating meat, drinking water, simplifying what we eat, can open us up and it just, it creates a, a kinder and more personable way of being in the world. And there's a deeper philosophical issue here. I'm reading this wonderful book. It was published in 2019. I'll have a link in the show notes to it. But it's about the transition from a hunter-gatherer civilization to the agricultural civilization that happened 10,000 years ago. And one of the points in the book is that we tend to think that this transition was one of great progress, that it made human life much better. You know, the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes said that for ancient man, life was nasty, brutish, and short. And that was that's the prevailing point of view. That's what's been taught in schools for a long time. That civilization gave us enough food to eat. Civilization helped curb our, our tribal anger and our bloodthirstiness and vengeance at each other. Man is wolf to man, is an old Greek saying. But you know what anthropologists have found? None of that is true. That's all myth. In fact, hunter-gatherers were peaceful. They were happy. They were independent. They were well-nourished. And they were healthy. They lived long lives. Now, their lifespan was not as long on average as ours because many children died in childbirth. And there were no antibiotics, so infections were deadly. So in many ways, life has gotten better in certain dimensions. But the kind of hierarchy, the kind of world wars that we saw in the 20th century, the technological destruction, the mental health illness, the, the infectious diseases that spread in agricultural civilization, in agricultural communities, that didn't happen among the hunter-gatherers. There was a certain kindness and generosity of spirit it's extraordinary. You know, human beings are capable of such great altruism. I saw uh, there was a news story recently about a, a man who tried to jump off a bridge in London and several passerbys stopped him and saved him and held him for an hour until proper help could, could arrive. That we human beings, we have these tendencies in ourselves that are truly generous and outward looking. And that comes from our early hunter-gatherer days. For 95% of that, that human beings have been on the planet, we were hunter-gatherers. Less than 5% did we live in this modern type of civilization. So our altruistic roots are, are, come from that hunter-gatherer era. And why do I say all this? Well, it's interesting history. I love reading about it. But the carnivore way of eating helps return us. It echoes those roots. We go back, we 
we can, in a sense, discover who we really are. And when we nourish ourselves, we nourish ourselves with what our ancestors nourished themselves with, perhaps we can recover some of that generosity. Perhaps we can get ourselves out of this mess of division and conflict and anger that we find ourselves in. Don't you sometimes feel that everybody uh, is at their breaking point right now? I feel it. I interact with so many people and there is a sense of anger and hopelessness that we see around us. And I think the carnivore way of eating is a way out. It's not perfect for everybody. It doesn't work for everybody. But at least being mindful of where our food comes from and trying to reduce the inflammation and the ultra-processed food that that thwarts our brains, that harms us in ways we don't even know, bringing back a sense of the natural, the proper human way of eating can help restore that original, beautiful human inside each of us. So this was just a little rant for today, a little insight inspired by some of my recent reading. So what can getting rid of carbs do for our hearts? It can open them up. It can nourish them. It can widen them. And I hope you can widen your heart and nourish yourself with the proper human diet. Shalom.